Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and welcome all viewers. This may very well be the most important video I've ever recorded. I highly encourage everyone to attentively watch this video from the beginning to the end. If you are a Muslim, inshallah, this is going to help make sure that you have a proper foundation when it comes to Islam. And that way, when you see people preaching a very dangerous, extreme, deviant ideology, you will be able to identify it. And also, if you are a non-Muslim, if you understand the concepts expressed in this video, then you will truly understand why extremism comes from a misrepresentation of Islam. Some of this dangerous rhetoric is not exclusive to the individual whose videos we are going to be analyzing today, but the reason why we've chosen him is because he is very popular on TikTok. TikTok is most popular amongst the youth. This person has over 415,000 followers. And the videos that we have extracted clips from all have well over 100,000 views. One even has over 1.1 million views. Unfortunately, your children may have already watched these videos. They may have already been affected by this flawed understanding of Islam. And as we will demonstrate, this flawed foundational understanding can lead someone far astray into very dangerous territory. And from the outset of this video, I want to go out of my way and say that I am not proclaiming that this individual is from these deviant groups that I'm going to be mentioning today. However, inshallah, I will clearly show how his rhetoric is from these deviant groups. And it's not just one statement here or one slip of the tongue there, but rather he is clearly promoting a flawed methodology that is manifested in various ways in several videos. Now, without further ado, we are going to take a look at the first clip. And keep in mind, this is about what we call the kalima in Islam. It is about the statement, La ilaha illallah. This is the most important concept to understand. This is the foundation of Islam. So if this is not foundationally correct, then anything that is built upon it is going to be off. And what La ilaha illallah means is that nothing is worthy of worship except Allah. That nothing is worshipped in truth except Allah. Let's see what he says. Islam boils down to the statement, La ilaha illallah which is commonly translated to, there is no God but Allah. However, this is incredibly limited as a translation. And actually in classical Arabic, the word ilaha doesn't just mean God, it means that God is the only authority, the only sovereign in our lives that tells us exactly how to live our lives. Now notice that he did not mention a single time that la ilaha illallah means that nothing is worthy of worship except Allah, which is the proper definition. But rather, he said that it means that God is the only authority, the only sovereign in our lives that tells us exactly how to live our lives. And it's not that this rhetoric is incorrect in and of itself, but rather it's a statement of truth that is used to push a false methodology. Ironically, he says that it is extremely limited to translate the kalima as there is no God but Allah. But then he proceeds to give an even more limited definition. When we talk about God, there are many things that are unique to him. However, in this brother's definition, he is focusing on sovereignty. This is how he translates the Arabic word hukum, which means legislation or rule. So although it is absolutely true to say that the hukum is for Allah, in this context, this statement of truth is being used to deviate towards falsehood. And as we continue this video, you'll find that this is nothing new. But rather, this deviation is from the very first sects to go astray in Islam. Therefore, we have over a thousand years of history and scholarship dealing with this issue. In the following clips from the same video, you will see him reiterate this rhetoric. Inil hukmu illa lillah. Sovereignty only belongs to Allah. Know that if any Muslim wants to stay in Islam, they must hold true to la ilaha illallah no matter what. And what that means is that you make Allah the only sovereign in your life, even over your own desires. So as we can see, he is explicitly attaching the following ayah to define la ilaha illallah. In al hukmu illa lillah. The hukm is only for Allah. So as I mentioned, this is from the rhetoric of the first sects in Islam to deviate. If we look at an authentic hadith in Sahih Muslim, we read that the Khawarij came out against Ali ibn Abi Talib, that the Khawarij came out against the great companion, the cousin of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, the fourth of the rightly guided caliphs. The Khawarij came out against him and what did they say? They said, La hukma illa lillah. 
There is no rule but for Allah. Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, said, Kalimatu haq, urida biha batil. A word of truth by which is intended falsehood. Who said this? The great companion Ali radiallahu anhu. Ali continues, Verily the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam described some people and I recognize their description in these people. They speak the truth with their words, but it does not go beyond this. And he pointed to his throat. Brothers and sisters, this is the clear rhetoric of the Khawarij, a deviant sect that the Prophet Muhammad himself sallallahu alayhi wasallam warned against. He referred to them as the dogs of the hellfire. The Khawarij labeled great companions to be disbelievers, tried to kill them, and in some cases actually did kill them. And why? What did they try to use as a justification to kill the companions? To label them as disbelievers? Well, it all goes back to Al-Hukum, the rule, the legislation. According to them, Ali wasn't completely ruling by Islamic law. And if you don't rule completely according to Islamic law, according to their standards, which apparently Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, didn't even fulfill, then they label you a disbeliever. And what comes next? The spilling of blood and trying to overthrow that government. Notice what the individual said in this video. He said, know that if any Muslim wants to stay in Islam, then they must hold true to la ilaha illallah. But whose understanding of la ilaha illallah? Is it the understanding of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and his rightly guided companions? No, but rather it is a misunderstanding that led to the unjust killing of the rightly guided companions. And this was foundationally based on their going to an extreme regarding legislation. So to say that if someone wants to stay in Islam, then they have to follow this flawed methodology, then that means that those who don't follow it don't stay in Islam which means they are outside the fold of Islam, meaning they are not Muslims. They are disbelievers. And this has takfir written all over it. And this is how a flawed foundation can lead to unjustly labeling Muslims as disbelievers. To the extent that the rightly guided companions, the best of the Muslims, were labeled as disbelievers by the people who fell into this methodology. And this has led to horrific trials of instability and bloodshed throughout history. It has continued until this very day. And in this next clip, which is from a different video, we're going to start seeing the fruits of this deviation. In fact, Iran is definitely not a Muslim country and its actions do not represent Islam either. For a country to be Islamic, its laws must be run completely by Islamic law, which is why no such country exists today. There you have it. Clearly he states that there is no Islamic country that exists today. Why? Because the laws are not run completely by Islamic law. But what does he say about Iran specifically? He says, in fact, Iran is definitely not a Muslim country. Now, why isn't Iran a Muslim country? I mean, after all, they are officially called the Islamic Republic of Iran. Well, if he understood la ilaha illallah properly, then he might make an argument related to that. One might argue it's because they worship 12 imams or they make takfir of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad or because they believe that the Quran is incomplete? No, he doesn't bring up any of this. He says that it's not a Muslim country and that no Islamic country exists today because they are not run completely by Islamic law, according to him. And although what we previously mentioned was the rhetoric of the Khawarij, the complete lack of concern we see in this clip regarding one's aqidah, their belief, echoes the rhetoric of a group called Hizb tahrir and this is a hizb that has clearly been influenced by the ideology of the Khawarij. However, they also differ from the Khawarij in certain things. And one of those things is a complete disregard for worrying about one's aqidah. To them, their priority is establishing an Islamic governance, a khilafah. It's not one's belief. And in this next clip, he is clearly spreading a talking point of hizb tahrir But first, let's recap and remember that foundationally, the concern of such people is the governance. It's legislation. It's al-hukum. They have a misunderstanding of la ilaha illallah where the priority is legislation. If somebody doesn't rule completely according to Islamic law, then they are potentially disbelievers and their country is not an Islamic country. And since he claims that there is no Islamic country in the entire world that exists today, let's see what he thinks happened historically for us to reach this point today. From the death of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, all the way until 1924, the Muslims were united under one banner, Islam. There was no such thing as Pakistan, Qatar, Syria, Lebanon, Turkey. It was simply 
just the Muslims representing the flag of Islam. So this idea that the Muslims were all united under a Khilafah up until 1924 is not only a clear talking point of Hizb tahrir but it's also laughably ahistorical. But we don't even have to deep dive into history, we can just look at the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad One narration says that the Prophet peace be upon him said, the prophetic Khilafah will last for 30 years, then Allah will give the dominion to whomever he wills. Another narration says, the Khilafah after me in my ummah will last for 30 years, then there will be kingship after that. And we find that the Khilafah of Abu Bakr was two years, that the Khilafah of Omar was 10 years, the Khilafah of Uthman was 12 years, and the Khilafah of Ali was 6 years. May Allah be pleased with all of the companions. We add this up, we get 30 years. This is actually a prophecy of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Meanwhile, we have this individual saying that the Khilafah lasted for over 1,000 years, saying that only until 100 years ago, the Ummah was united under one banner together under a Khilafah. Not only that, but he says, Long story short, the only reason these countries that you see exist today is because the West chopped up our lands, turned us against each other, and disunited the Muslims. He says that the only reason these countries that you see exist today is because the West chopped up our lands, turned us against each other, and disunited the Muslims. But what does Allah tell us in the Quran? Allah tells us, indeed, Allah will not change the condition of a people until they change what is in themselves. But when Allah wills a people's punishment, there can be no turning back of it, and they will find besides him no protector. So to suggest that it's only because the West did this to us that we are in the condition that we're in only highlights the foundational issues this ideology has, which we've already exposed. The foundations of Islam, one's belief, one's aqidah, is compromised for the sake of what? For the sake of governance, for the sake of establishing a khilafah. Because they have gone to the extreme of making this religion about that. Rather than understanding foundationally, we need to worship Allah alone. We need to have a proper understanding of our deen and implement it ourselves. This is what all the prophets called to. This is what the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, focused on. And then from the ground up, Allah blessed them with a khilafah. However, you'll find with this ideology, they believe that from the top down, this is how the Muslims will be successful. You just establish a khilafah and then everything is going to work out after that. You don't focus on the beliefs of the people. You don't even focus on the beliefs of the rulers. They are just deluded into thinking that this religion is all about establishing a government. And when you make the religion all about that, what do you find? You find chaos. You find ignorance. And you find it doesn't work. This isn't what the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, taught us. This isn't from the guidance that Allah sent us. And once you deviate from the truth, what is there except falsehood? And this specific type of falsehood leads to so much pain, bloodshed, and misery. And now I'm just going to play one last clip, which reiterates all the rhetoric he's been spewing. But more specifically, he expresses this idea of a top-down approach. That we have to establish a khilafah and then everything's going to work out. Inil hukmu illa lillah. Legislation is only for Allah. And before you say it, no. There's not a single country on the face of the earth today that applies Islam practically. Muslims today believe in Islam, but sadly don't apply it, and that needs to change. Doing that will lead to true revival, and all humanity would benefit as Allah promises in the Quran. May Allah guide this brother to the truth, and may Allah protect us and all of our loved ones from falling into this very dangerous, deviated ideology. If you would like to learn more about this topic, there are many resources available right now. Abdul Rahman of Knowledge North has an entire playlist dedicated to talking about Hizb Tahrir. He also has a playlist where he goes into the history of the Khawarij. This is an entire book about Hizb Tahrir written by our brother Wasim Ismail. And this topic has been dealt with extensively. As I said, this rhetoric is from the first deviant sects of Islam. But what I really encourage is for all of us to seek knowledge of the foundations of our religion from the right people. Because when you do that, you can spot this type of rhetoric from a mile away. Allah knows best. Thank you for watching. Please check the links in the description. Jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.